Usually in Utah, we'd start a few minutes late, but uh, we're going to go ahead and break the tradition and start one minute early if it's okay with everybody. Um, I want to welcome everybody here to our meeting tonight, today, and uh, we have the honor of having Reverend uh, Stephen Ray from the Grace Episcopal Church um, here to give us our invitation. We very much appreciate him coming. After which, uh, Gene Rose, uh, Marine Corps uh, League 1270, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Says, come to the podium and state your name. <laughs> I'm Steve Bray. It's an honor to be here to offer this prayer at the beginning of this meeting. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, send down upon these Washington County commissioners and all who work and serve in Washington County the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice. May they sense your living and loving presence and your guidance as they meet this evening, so with steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve to promote the well-being of all your people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jim Rose with uh, the Wing for the 1270 here in St. George. I've been asked to... Uh, Lead you in the Pledge of Allegiance so that you would stand. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you for your past service. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. Um, I say this every meeting, but I really do appreciate not only our invocations that, that come because of our, uh, our association with Interfaith Council, but also um, our veteran groups that, that always send somebody to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. It really does help our meetings. I appreciate that very much. Um, we'll start our meeting today uh, considering the consent agenda. The consent agenda is the first item on our agenda. It is uh, passed by one non-debatable motion if any commissioner wishes um, to opposes any uh, point of the consent agenda, they can take it out and it will be the first item on our regular agenda. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to pull item F off our consent agenda. The sheriff has asked to speak about that item. Very good. And with that exception, I'll second uh, Commissioner Renstrom's motion, which I assume that you're making to. Oh. Do you want me? To? Okay, I'll go, go ahead. ahead. So besides pulling that one item off, I will make a motion that we approve the auditor, audit, auditor approved claims for payment from June 7th, 2017 through June 20th, 2017. Item B, a uh, special commission meeting minutes of May 31st, 2017 and regular commission meeting minutes of June 6th, 2017. A, a, approval of administrative adjustment for real property, approval of administrative adjustment for personal property, approval of applications for tax, property tax abatement for six properties, and approval and acceptance of the Sun Creek subdivision final plat. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes. Item, uh, our first item then is uh, consideration of contract number 160502 between the State of Utah Administrative Office of Courts and the Washington County Sheriff's Office for bailiff and prim perimeter security. A mandate, Title 17, Chapter 22, it states that the debate of the service, security services are the responsibility of the sheriff by code. But the legislature also put its sites for money to reimburse the counties um, for those services. And the original contract was done with reimbursement of about 66%. Uh, we've never gotten up to that point. And as we see increases in the request for service and bailiffs with the uh, amount of ports, um, six full-time ports that are running on full-time in our building now. Um, that's increased personnel costs and stuff to fill those. Um, the last two years, there's been no negotiation reference. That contract has been the same this year. Um, basically, I just sent a copy of it. Um, it's now reduced 8,000 from the, um, what we were actually getting last year. So what does this change that percentage from to on what we're being asked to pay, roughly? Well, our actual costs are just under half a million dollars. The reimbursement last year was 298000 
Yeah, they're 290. Yeah. But the request for services to provide over there is going up. That right. Is the and so they're working with the administrative office of courts and <coughs> the contracts. They're saying that the funding sources through citations and other things that helps pay that is where we're seeing the reduction of funds so there's not enough money to reimburse. So it's definitely an item that we need to talk with our legislators about and looking as we're going forward that those are um, ongoing talks for us as a county but are the responsibility of the state to be reimbursed back. So are there other unfunded mandates that uh, impact the sheriff's office in the county that... Do you have that much time? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it just seems as if they're increasing uh, easily or, or, or rapidly because it's easier to to pass legislation and then let those costs trickle down to the counties. Just for the public awareness, and that's why I wanted to make sure that we have to talk about it, make sure that people are, we, need, we really need to reach out to our um, local legislators and know the burden that that puts us in yeah. here locally and see if we can't. Thank you. Thank you. So, the sheriff, is it, chair, is it still your recommendation we pass this? Yeah, because like otherwise, to, when I send them the bill, they won't pay me back. I still have to legally okay. show up anyway. Thank you. Now, this, uh, we're still probably going to get another judge down here. They have they well, announced that. Not that we, the fifth district is <coughs> approved for a judge, but. Uh, it could go to Cedar City. It could oh, Cedar. Okay. I think Judge okay. Walton's going back and forth right. between um, both. It will be shared between Beaver and Ice County. Well, it will okay. be in the position that was approved. All right. I didn't know where that was happening, but I wasn't well, certain that all the yeah. was coming here. I would make a motion uh, that we approve contract number 160502, a contract between the State of Utah Administrative Office of the Courts and Washington County Sheriff's. I'm just going to say, and Washington County for bailiff and perimeter security. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes. Um, item one, uh, consideration of uh, purchase requests and ratification of purchase requests. Mark, how's it going? Good. Hey, how are you? Very good. Thank you. Uh, first thing we have today is for uh, St. George Commission and Tourism. And it is uh, for the cost for uh, their brochure printing. And uh, this is a budgeted item for them. And it is $14,500. Uh, the next we have is for our building board, for our building maintenance department, uh, Paul Sullivan. And uh, they need to replace the variable uh, air valves that they have out of the jail. <coughs> $19,700 and also a lot cheaper uh, to replace those 38 valves than it is to replace the whole system out there. And also, it'd probably be around $100,000 if they. Yeah, that's really come up with a tremendous savings on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one we have, uh, we have three for the sheriff. The first one is for diving masks, and this one is for uh, $11,134. And of that, uh, they've got donations to take care of uh, that through Iron Man and also a Rotary Club has donated to help with these masks. And they'll donate around $8,304 $8, and the balance will come out of the search and rescue budget. And that will be $3,630 to take care of that <coughs> the sheriff's office. Next we have is for a new uh, washing machine uh, out of the Sheriff's Office, this is an uh, industrial machine, and it will uh, take care of the needs out there, and it is $13,000. Uh, $13, Next we have one is for the Sheriff's Office, is for the purchase of new targets out of the range, out of the target range. And this is a single source vendor on this because they don't uh, want to replace the, they, be much more expensive to replace the existing system than just replacing the targets. So that's what they want. they're going to do is just replace the targets, which is going to be twenty-three thousand seven hundred seventy-seven dollars. And then the last thing we have is to ratify uh, the water tank that was purchased for the road department for their truck. We'll just a little bit about this at the last, last break, last, last, last meeting that we had. This 
decide to move forward with it because uh, they are greatly in need of it. So we have moved forward and uh, want to ratify that. And it's twenty-two thousand seven hundred fifty dollars, and that's all the money we have for today. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the purchase request and ratify the one purchase request as outlined by Mark Lange. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes. Item two, emergency service report. <coughs> and what are your here? So what kind of targeting system do you use out there? It's actually action targets. We currently have 15 of the training targets on the, for the training and they're um, actually replacing some of the damaged parts with the upgrade that we're doing. We're adding an additional 10 targets to that system. So it gives 25 different urban targets out there on the training. You know, the thought crossed my mind if your deputies weren't such good shots, the targets wouldn't get hit as often and it'd last longer. It's actually the air mechanism in the bottom yeah, that needs to be replaced. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And that one's actually uh, protected behind that uh, cinder block wall that uh, has been poured there just to try and protect those mechanisms as best we can. Thank you. And uh, on the other one, for the uh, search and rescue for the dive mask, those would be uh, full face. Um, hazardous I was going to make a comment that these divers are hazmat certified and uh, it's really a great skill that they bring not just to Washington County but uh, for our whole five county area. The uh, masks that we're currently using um, have far exceeded their um, warranties and any type of coverage and stuff. In fact, the point it's hard to find some of the um, replacement parts and things for them. Those were originally purchased um, through the region um, with the pipe and part of the, uh, what do they call it there? Homeland Security. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, and we've got a lot of good use out of us that they're upgrading for this new one. And uh, I tell you, the, the support that we've had from the community, from uh, the different groups, the robbers, the friendly group, um, and, and there's so many different uh, groups that are willing to help out the volunteers. <coughs> uh, I don't know how to do it without them. These masks have communications capability built in them and that's another thing that's really unique. And it's tough to communicate with a wave and things underwater, but these are auger masks or at least mm -hmm. full face communication system and then most of the guys are driving diving with the with the full encapsulation dive suits and with the full body protection. So that we're not exposed to any different hazardous materials but more and rather wise when they're being covered in the they actually just helped the uh, Water Conservancy District. I believe that's one of the ones on this report of uh, a boat that was capsized uh, that went down in San Hollow just uh, this last weekend. Um, and of course, there's a hazard with all the different chemicals, gasoline, and oils and stuff start to leak out of it. Water Conservancy and State Parks were extremely worried about that. All the dive team comes up back and moved from the water as quickly as we could without having that additional pollution in the water source. So, with the search and rescue report, <coughs> <coughs> this is, uh, since our last report of uh, May 16th, I believe it was, we've had 13 additional calls. During the year to date, total up to 50 um, already. And uh, 611 man hours that were donated just over the last month. Wow. Um, uh, just go over a couple of these. The one was actually uh, where our dive team did show up and was uh, water safety during one of the triathlons in uh, San Paulo. Uh, ended up providing uh, assistance and pulling through, uh, six swimmers from the water due to exhaustion, hypothermia, and cramping. Was able to get them over to the medical people there on the beach and was able to get them taken care of. Some of them were actually transported, but they did need assistance. ATV accident out on Sand Mountain, a uh, 50 year old male, 55 year old female, uh, wearing an ATV uh, accident. Um, the one was black flag, the other was ground transport, but both of them ended up going to the RMC. We had a couple of hikers that uh, parked uh, there by the uh, water tank in Tokerville and go over Toker Falls. Um, somehow got disoriented and ended up on the wrong mountain. And uh, so deputies of search and rescue went over and located them and got hydrated in the back of the vehicle without medical. Uh, we assisted Mojave County um, on a um, rollover accident out on Mount Trumbull Road. And uh, both individuals in the vehicle were ejected. It's kind of an interesting area um, because they are in Arizona, but it's outside of the response area for the Colorado City, but it's also outside the response area for Beaver Dam. And 
trying to get both across, and then across the line into the state of Arizona when the only license in the state of Utah really started to cause some, some problems. But uh, our search and rescue, uh, which are, we do have the EMS um, response team for um, first responder, was able to get out there and help provide some of the medical mm -hmm. activity to get uh, both Black Light and Class no, Mercy Air. Um, and that was the came in to transport both individuals. So uh, quite a bit of time that went into that one. And we're trying to work with them with limited resources that they have. So I've now been in a little bit more communication with the sheriff down there. We do have the MOU in place, and so we can start relying on some of that to share resources back and forth to help out. We dealt with the lost hiker on Red Mountain. Um, that one was 36 hours of time. Um, we were able to locate him and get him back without medical. Um, had a couple individuals that barely got flying and just saw a couple of vehicles that were stuck down in the wash down by the dam. And a few flow races, it just something didn't look right about it. So we started sending teams out. It took them a couple hours back to find the individuals, but um, both vehicles were stuck and they were completely out of water, dehydrated. Um, have to be again just over the border into um, Mojave County. Uh, they definitely responded and with uh, Daryl and our guys here to help these people rescue them back out of there. Um, then there was another rollover on that tunnel loop with medical assistance. Um, they refused to transport though well after the first initial contact was done. Uh, we had 26 members that then um, donated the time and wanted to train them attended the search and rescue conference that we put on each year at the Fish Lake. We had over 300 participants from across the state of Utah from all the different search and rescue teams. They were able to get some training in the medical use helicopters, tracking, swift water, um, computer work, and management of lost persons incident. Um, approximately 216 hours worth of training of 26 members of our team going up. Um, while we, they were up there, they also responded to a injured hiker on the MIA trail up in Colob. So luckily the entire team didn't go up, but we still had some people in the hand to handle that while the majority of them were up there doing the training. Um, that one was actually took 70 <coughs> hours to be able to locate this individual and the manpower pack came back out of there. Um, we had a UTV accident on Sand Mountain on June 12th, uh, the sunk boat on the 16th, and a fall victim out in the gap area. Um, we also needed medical assistance on the 18th, so definitely keep you good. So, Sheriff, uh, is there anything that we can do? I know that in these kinds of years where you have uh, an inordinate amount of call-out, really, it seems like, how do we keep the morale of our personnel up? And have we got any issues there that we can help with, or? You know, these guys are amazing. It seems like the more we've used them, the more they say bring on, and, you know, so we make sure we try and take care of them as best we can. They love the training, and we show up and feed them as part of it, you know, minimal task force to do those types of things to help them out. Uh, I can tell you that on this last training that we just did at uh, Fish Lake, um, almost, you know, a little more than half the members that went up there for the tank training brought their families with them. And so the wives and the kids got to be there and see the training that they were doing and see the things that they go through and be able to observe and actually get able to climb on the helicopter and check it out, things like that. And I uh, tell you, it was huge to see the interaction of the families and stuff that these guys are leaving to go out and do the service that they actually got to actually see hands on with what this is doing. I had a couple of the wives come up and says, hey, can I come with you? They want to volunteer too. Yeah. <laughs> so I just I couldn't do it without them. I really couldn't. Great service and a great benefit for Washington County and its citizens. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Sheriff. Appreciate you. Third item is a consideration of update of the Washington County Employee Policy and Procedure Manual regarding medical leave. John? Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, what we're asking for is for the Commission to consider a very minor change to our policy manual. Eric Clark and I uh, were brought uh, up to speed on this. It's a training that we received earlier this year that there was a gap in our, uh, in our policy manual that uh, we're looking for a very easy correction. Basically, workers' compensation leave was not, uh, it was ambiguous in our policy manual as to whether or not that fell under FMLA uh, 
And so our, our fix is asking that it be placed in there and be uh, clarified that it is taken as part of that new way uh, currently not consecutively. And we ask that the commission approve this change. Seems like a pretty straightforward change. Yeah, it's only a sentence or two. So Mr. Chairman, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we approve the updating an update to the Washington County Employees Policies and Procedure Manual on Requiring a Medical Leave. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The next item is a presentation of our Workers' Compensation Fund. Jonathan, I'm glad you stayed at the podium. Uh, this is just a very simple presentation I would receive uh, in recognition of the efforts of all of our county employees, a uh, refund of part of our premiums that were paid 2016 specifically received 7.5 percent of our premiums back in recognition of the low claims that we have had here so we just wanted to make the uh, commission aware of the efforts of all the employees and uh, aware of that refund that that's great well thank you uh, yeah. out of curiosity what is our mod factor do you know what that's at or i don't know what that's currently at but that's information we can get for the commission thank you I've been told by representatives of the working the workers' compensation fund that we're the lowest, and that um, our we really do need to congratulate our employees because they they do a great job, and, and also this their their supervisor working with them to get them back on the job and modify their work schedule in a way that helps them get back on the job and they don't have to clean anything. <coughs> ben, I just I agree. I'd make a uh, I guess we're not making any motion, but uh, I'll make a comment that our mod factor the last time I checked was 0 0.5, which is, uh, I think, the lowest yeah. that people I've talked with have ever seen, and so that resonates with what you stated. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks, appreciate you. Well, let's see, we're gonna skip item five because uh, we're gonna do a presentation from Dixie Regional Medical, but they'll be here shortly. Uh, six, consideration of ordin ordinance 2017-2017. Uh, 1092-0, an ordinance vacating a portion of County Road known as Pinto <coughs> Canyon Road in Pinto, Washington County. And Scott, it's so good to see you. Good to see you too, Commissioners. Um, so several years ago, uh, Pinto Canyon Road was realigned. And just this cleanup from that realignment, there's an approximately 14,000 square foot piece of the old roadway that is no longer needed. So the process is to vacate that. Um, so we need to hold a public hearing. The public hearing was held in planning commission meeting uh, last week, and uh, there was there was no one. Sorry, though there was someone there to speak about it, but uh, they understood the public notice wrong, and it was a different part of Pinto. Um, so this piece of road is located in the northeast corner of block 10 of the old Pinto survey. And so there were no comments in the public hearing for or against it, and so the planning commission recommended approval of it. Is any part of this going to remain open administratively for maintaining the power line, or is this portion of the road completely going to be abandoned? It's completely abandoned. So Thank you. So when we vacate it, do we vacate it back to Usually, property owner or? Yes, usually what ends up happening is that center line is divided and it goes to, you know, in the sense of the property owner on the north, property owner on the south. In this situation, the property owners on the north and the south have been working together and there's been some buying and selling of property and so it's actually just going to one of them. Okay. Um, but this is just clean up of an item, just making sure that it went through the process properly. Commissioner Iverson, I would make a motion to recommend passing Ordinance 2017-1092-0, an ordinance vacating a portion of the county road known as Pinto Canyon Road in Pinto, Washington County. I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes. Thanks, uh, item 7, consideration of Ordinance 2017-1093-0, an ordinance establishing the membership and duties of the Washington County Habitat Conservation Advisory Com Committee. Commissioner uh, I'd speak to this. This is actually uh, memorializing uh, by ordinance the way that we have been uh, 
working under the implementation agreement and the habitat conservation plan uh, calls for a habitat conservation uh, advisory committees. <coughs> the committee is formed, we've got members that are working well, but we've never really had that uh, memorialized by ordinance, and so this ordinance codifies that. And I would make, well, yeah, I did. Okay. I'd make a motion to uh, pass it. Second. Have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes. Item A, consideration of ordinance 2017-1094-0, an ordinance rezoning a certain portion of Washington County and Diamond Valley from OST 20 open space transitional 20 acre minimal lot size to zone um, A5 agriculture 5 acre minimum lot size. Zone hereafter fully described in the ordinance. Scott. Okay. So in Diamond Valley, uh, to the east of the school, kind of southeast of the school, um, there was Corey and Oregon that owns a 12 acre parcel. And the parcel, um, over time being subdivided, whatever, it ends up, it was, it's located in the OST 20 zone. The minimum lot size for that zone is 20 acres. So this was, did not meet the requirement of that zone. He came in wanting to get a building permit to build an accessory dwelling on the property, but because the property didn't meet that uh, zoning requirement, he couldn't do it. So he rezoned, so he's requesting to rezone the property to A5, the A5 zone would make it possible for him to be able to use this property as he wanted to use it. Um, he, just as a side note, he's received conditional use approval for that accessory dwelling subject to the zone change being approved. The public hearing was held in the planning commission meeting. Uh, no one spoke for or against it, and the planning commission rec unanimously recommended the approval of it. So before you, it's time to go next one. Is this staff also recommended? Yes. So seeing no comment, Mr. Chairman, I go ahead and make a motion that we approve resolution number R 2017-1094-0 and ordinance rezoning a certain portion of Washington County Diamond Valley from OST-20 open space transition 20 acre minimum lot size zone to A5 agricultural 5 acre minimum lot size zone hereafter fully described in this ordinance. A second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, item 9, consideration of, of ordinance 2017-1095-0, an ordinance amending the fencing requirement for pools and jacuzzis in Washington County Code. Okay, we had, um, had several situations. A lot of people like to go out and buy the swimming pools or wading pools at Costco, Walmart. Um, the way our ordinance is currently written um, requires fencing around all swimming pools. And so we've had questions as to, hey, if I have a wading pool or if I have a portable swimming pool that I buy at Costco, do I have to fence around it? And so we looked at that with the planning commission. And so the changes that are before you are a reflection of that. So what we ended up doing was removing the requirements so it's only for permanent swimming pools and ground pools. Um, we have language in there now that if the, you know, sometimes people will put in one of those portable pools but then build a deck up around it so it is more permanent. At, in that case, it becomes permanent and so fencing requirements would be there. We also have put in there the state applicable building code. Um, because that will address, you know, if, let's say there's steps going up to that deck that you can put a gauge on it may meet the barrier requirement uh, set up by Joe. So we just made some changes um, to that definition or to the fencing requirement and then we added two new definitions. We previously in our definition section we only had private swimming pools. So we added public swimming pools and then also just swimming pools. Um, as we're going through making some of the updates to our code to come into more compliance with the state requirements and some changes made at the state level, we're going to be creating more specific definitions so things can be addressed in our definition if there's any clarification or difference between different types of terms. Does this bring us more in line with, with state and, and other surrounding municipalities? Um, no. As far as the fencing around it, no. Yeah. Not really. Um, everyone kind of has their own thing. A lot of people will have different height requirements. Uh, some, some will say five feet, some will say four feet. Um, 
some will say that the fencing has to, even if your yard is fenced, that you still have to fence around the pool so that occupants of the home uh, can't, you know, someone in the home couldn't just go out and walk into the pool. Um, the way that the planning commission wanted the ordinance to be written is that they wanted to protect the surrounding property owners from the pool, but they didn't necessarily, you don't have to fence your pool within your yard if your yard is already fenced. That makes sense. Well, I appreciate this because how the, the current ordinance exists, if you go to Costco and buy a hot tub and you don't plug it in, you don't hold water, you're, you're violating our ordinance. This is saying, hey, if you have a hot tub, you don't need to have a fence. I've taken all the parents that have bought these little kiddie pools yeah. and unwittingly broken the law yeah. and, and so we need to make sure that our ordinance really reflects the intent yeah. of what we're trying to accomplish. And so I appreciate mm -hmm. uh, your willingness to take this on and, and bring it to us. You know, I, I think this is great when we look at our code and say, hey, how can we make it so people have more rights? And I think this yeah. is what it's doing. So. So, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve uh, ordinance number 2017-1095-0, an ordinance amending the fencing requirement for pools and jacuzzis in the Washington County Code. I'll second that. We have a motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, Scott. Good job. Uh, item 10, consideration of resolution R-2017-2206, a resolution appointing a board member to the Habitat Conservation Technical Committee. Commissioner Cox. Mr. Chairman, uh, we recently hired a new biologist uh, to work in our HCP, and I'm excited that uh, Michael Schiff, the new biologist, also brings a strong background in recreation, uh, which is one of the mandates of the Red Cliffs uh, National Conservation Area. And uh, as our biologist, uh, he is uh, best suited to represent Washington County on our Habitat uh, Conservation Technical Committee where they look at different issues that will come uh, before the HCP and require technical expertise and uh, recommendations for the Habitat Conservation Advisory Committee, which then makes recommendations to the county commission. And so. I recommend passage of resolution R-2017-2206 a resolution appointing uh, Michael Schiff to the Habitat Conservation Technical Committee. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Do we motion the, passes. Do we have the correct spelling of his name? We do. It, it's actually Scaife. Scaife? Oh. Well, that I and C got me. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. That's a weird. It took spell. me a few times to get okay. it right. I just want to make sure our documentation is correct. Uh, item 11, consideration of resolution R-2017-2207, a resolution appointing member to the specially funded transportation special service district. Commissioner Renstrom. Yeah, special funded. the specially funded <clears throat> transportation committee is, is dealing with some unique funds that come into the county and there's the or state law is kind of spells out how that's done and our clerk auditor does a good job helping us keep track of all those but one of them is we have to point someone at large and Arthur LeBaron he's uh, actually a licensed engineer and a licensed surveyor he also works for the city of Hurricane he has attended all the meetings he's he follow ups on it his term is expiring and I would just recommend that we renew his term for uh, another term uh, that would expire on May 29th uh, 2021 so seeing no one here, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we approve resolution number R-2017-2207, a resolution appointing a member to the special, specially funded transportation service district, specifically Arthur LeBaron. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item 12, consideration of resolution R-2017-2208, a resolution appointing members to the Washington County Library Board. Commissioner Renstrom. Yeah, so these are two individuals that are currently serving. Um, they've only served one term, so that we'd be appointing them for one more term. Um, I can tell you that they, they both take their duties very seriously. They also attend the meetings. They've been very active in the meetings and, and helping the library out. Um, so since they've done such a great job with their first term, I would recommend that we 
uh, renew their term for one more. That would expire on June 30th of 2021. I don't see them here, but with that, I'll go ahead and make the resolution that we approve resolution, or excuse me, the motion that we approve resolution number R-2017-2208, resolution appointing members to the Washington County Library Board, Gerald Jones and Lacey Hughes. For I'll a term second. That expires in June. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, the motion passes. 13, um, consideration of resolution R-2017-2209, a resolution clarifying the funding source for assistance in the construction of the Enterprise City Park. And I, Celeste, you are Eric Clark today, so. <laughs> it feels good to be Eric Clark today. <laughs> um, this, this is just clarifying a resolution that we passed last time. It had a fund code on there, mm -hmm. and now this spells out which fund it's coming from just to keep things yeah. transparent. Okay. So I already read it in the St. George News about the funding, so, so we know that motion passes. This is just yes. a little bit of housekeeping, mm -hmm. uh, letting us article. know. Okay, I will make a motion in support of resolution R-2017-2209, a resolution clarifying the funding source for assistance in constructing the Enterprise City Park. Second the motion. We have a motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes. Item 14, uh, consideration of resolution R-2017-2210, a resolution approving a complete reduction of 2017 property tax for certain parcels owned by Rural Housing Development Corporation, DBA, self-help. Commissioner Cox. I'd be happy to speak to that. Uh, the resolution uh, being discussed deals with uh, the Rural Housing Development Corporation, which works to uh, create affordable housing for Washington County residents and for uh, properties being held by a 501c3, which this entity is, there's a six-prong test under the law that determines whether or not the property qualifies for being exempt from taxes. Uh, since they're acquiring this land and working it through a process, but it's not yet uh, actually meeting that need of uh, providing uh, low-cost housing. This is an entity that I feel, although it does not meet the strict reading of the six-prong test, it's uh, meeting the overall mission of helping residents in Washington County with lower income levels achieve the American dream. Mm -hmm. And uh, as such, I uh, am in full support of what they're trying to do. And I feel that by approving these on a case-by-case -case basis every year, it allows us to scrutinize what's being done and if the intent of the uh, humanitarian mission is being met, that gives us <coughs> a chance to review that. And so I would make a motion in support of granting uh, a complete reduction of the 2017 property taxes for the parcels uh, in the resolution that are owned by the Rural Housing Development Corporation <coughs> doing business as self-help homes. So, so Dean, can I ask a question real quick? Yes. So are these lots that they're holding that'll be eventually homes built on? Or yes, okay. yes, okay. absolutely. All right, thanks. All right, I'll go ahead and second the motion. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes. Is, housing is one of the critical issues of our county, there's no doubt. And, and as a point, just to clarify for Commissioner Randstrom, there are a couple of parcels that may not qualify for having a home built on them, and those parcels have been withdrawn oh, okay. from this, and so only those that will have homes on them are included in this resolution. Very good. Item 15, consideration of resolution R-2017-2211, a resolution authorizing the filing of cross appeals for the 2017 centrally assessed properties. So, let's see, Eric, um, <laughs> Celeste. Okay, so this resolution does two separate things that we need to, I'm gonna explain. First, um, we have 
businesses that are centrally assessed by the state and then, then their taxes are apportioned to the counties that have appealed their tax valuations and we need to decide if we are going to cross appeal. And those um, businesses are ATT Communications, ATT Mobility, Intermountain Power Agency, Level 3, SkyWest, Sprint Corporation, Selco Partnership, doing business as Verizon. And so the reason that we want to cross appeal then is to make sure that we're being absolutely equitable for other businesses and homeowners in Washington County and for these entities themselves that are appealing their value. And my understanding, and you can maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but if uh, these taxes uh, were allowed to drop to the value that these companies feel they're, they're valued at, that would actually raise the property taxes on all of the Washington County assessed values uh, for homeowners and businesses by some amount uh, because the tax base would be diminished. Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. So why the, like, did the state contact us about these? Or how, how did we get notice that there was an appeal filed? I don't know the answer oh. to that question, okay. but yes. I could get it to we you. We did yes. get notice, this, yeah. I get a copy as the clerk of the BOE, and the assessor gets a copy of the state appeals. When they, they file the appeal, they just give us a copy of it. Mm -hmm. So let's say we don't adjoin an appeal. What happens? I will not come up there. Yes, please, yeah, sorry. I was just... In a lot of these, we're a minor player in the central assessed field. About between 3 and 4 percent of our taxable value in Washington County is, is centrally assessed, so a relatively small portion, but there are some big taxpayers in there. Uh, Generally, there are, say for instance, one of these, I think, you know, Mount Power Agency, their final one, uh, that, most of that resides in Miller County, where mm -hmm. the IPP has their coal-fired plant. So, uh, if we didn't sign on and cross appeal, we essentially would probably get the, the benefit of the people that did, if they did appeal that, they won't, they wouldn't adjust the value in, say, Miller County and not adjust the value, whether we cross appeal or not, but I think it's uh, more of a, uh, paying our fair share of the litigation that, that may take place to protect our property values. Okay. Okay, thank so, you. And you then the other thing this resolution does um, is make a decision about whether we will join a lawsuit based on a change in this last legislation in the way some of the properties are valued. The state legislature said they're going to change the way the properties are valued, and and some of the counties are suing saying that it's not constitutional to give a certain discount. industries an advantage when it comes to tax valuation. So the motion for this needs to specifically spell out whether we're filing cross appeals on these um, businesses who appealed their centrally assessed taxes and whether we will or will not be joining the lawsuit. Is that why there's all these blanks in the resolution? Yeah. Yes. List the so when, when someone makes a motion, they need to list what goes in those blanks. Okay. I, I, would, I would support joining uh, on, on two points. Uh, first of all, Commissioner Cox has made the point about equity, and the fact of it is, is that this affects everybody's fair share property tax. And then the second thing is about partnering with our fellow counties and in reality, Salt Lake County will carry most of the burden in this case. But um, for us as Washington County to, to step up and be, be a partner in that is, uh, is important. There is one, for example, AT&T. I mean, we're, we're talking a very, about a very minimal amount of, of money, but some of them are more substantial, so. Okay. It's my turn. <clears throat> so, Mr. Chairman, I make a, a motion that we approve resolution that we vote on resolution number R-2017-2211, a resolution authorizing the filing of a cross appeal for the 2017 centrally assessed properties, specifically naming in the, the cross appeals AT&T Communications, AT&T Mo Mobility, uh, Intermountain we've already done. No, that's 
It's Pacific Corps. No, it's Pacific Corps. Oh, Pacific Corps. excuse me. Okay, Intermountain Power Agency, Level 3, Pacific Corps. We've already taken care of Sky West. Uh, Sprint Corporation and Selesco Partnership, DBA, Verizon. A second. Very good. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes. Vote Commissioner Renstrom. Oh, you vote nay. Okay, very good. Just because of the second part. I agree with if I on this. I just don't All agree right. if I on the lawsuit against the Well, state. that's item number 15, I think. That's the one we just that, That's the one we just voted on. Yeah. They're, so they're it's in a, the same resolution because they, they're they both put both of them in the same resolution. Okay. All right. Issues. Did you want to? No, the motion okay. passes. Okay. No, I, I keep my vote the way it is. Okay. Okay. Just because I'm the lawyer and I have to do this. So the motion only addressed the first question of whether we cross appeal, but the motion didn't address whether we will or will not join the lawsuit. And, and so that's how I interpreted. Oh. So I, my vote really was to uh, join the cross appeal. And uh, I thought there were two resolutions, 2211 and 2210. No. No. No, it's one. It's a combined. 2210 is for so, the is, property tax for the rural mm -hmm. housing. So Commissioner Renstrom oh, needs... Oh, yeah, I, that's right. So I Commissioner Renstrom read my... that he... that to join the cross appeals, and then in addition, you need to say, and the resolution states that we will or will not, and then your vote and Commissioner it, Cox's it vote. It remains the same, though. Uh, I would support uh, authorizing... Joining, uh, the lawsuit, joining, joining the lawsuit. lawsuit. Yeah. We just need a motion and a second on <clears throat> that. So well, we just made the motion to appeal these. Now yeah. we need to make a motion to join the lawsuit. Yeah, the All right. Okay. Would you like? So I'd make a motion to uh, join the lawsuit. And I will second that motion. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any I opposed? Oppose, nay. nay. So the so, motion passes. So Cheyenne, does that work out? Okay, thank you. Very good. Well, at this time, we have some distinguished guests here. So we'll jump back to item five, which is presentation Dixie Regional Medical Center update. Hospital Administrator Terry Kane and uh, Governing Board Chair Steve Kaplan. It's good to see you. We're here. <laughs> I had to visit a friend in the hospital today, and uh, yes. they were being well taken care of. So. Well, I hope so. That's our goal, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm Terry King. I'm the CEO of Dixie. I'm the regional vice president for the Mountain for the end of this state. And we're pleased to be here. I'm very pleased to be the provider of health care in our county. And I have with me today our regional CFO, Steve Mance, and our board chairman, Steve Kaplan. And we're going to talk a little bit about the hospital in general at the end, but today the purpose of us being here is to present our charity plan to the county commissioners. And I believe you've seen it, and um, we sent it forth previously, but it is our responsibility to come forth and talk about it a little bit with you and also to ask you if there's anything that we're missing the mark on and that you would like to see us um, pursue or do differently than we're doing. This is a great opportunity once a year for our commission to raise those issues with us and we'll certainly make sure we look at them and address them. We want to be a great provider of health care for the family. So I'd like to start out this morning or this afternoon by at least talking about what the charitable plan is. Now we're going to talk about the three sections that are required by Utah State Law. The first one is um, that Utah, the Utah State Tax Commission's not-profit hospital standards that require us to be in compliance with an order to get a tax exemption. And Steve can talk briefly about that. The second one is what are our policies and procedures and what have we done that we're proud of to ensure the county commission that we're meeting those standards. And then the third section, and we'll do these things in brief because you've read this. But the third is what are we proposing to do going forward? And we can mention a few of those things, and I know my governing board chairman would like to talk for a few minutes about what we can expect of us here in the next 
year as we continue to bring service design and we finish the project that you're all looking at every day when you drive down uh, River Road, right? Yeah. So with that, I'd like to turn the time over to Steve Nance and he'll talk to you about the plan. It's good to be here with you uh, today. Um, as Terry mentioned, uh, there's a few things I wanted to talk about uh, in terms of the standards that we're required to meet. Um, as, uh, as an organization, and actually the first one is on an organization, and uh, we are to be uh, designated a not-for-profit uh, hospital with a share of purpose, and uh, that's certainly um, um, our, uh, our mission. Um, uh, also, private annulment, uh, that mail earnings in order uh, to the benefit of private shareholders, being a not-for-profit organization, all of our earnings that we do have go back into the community to with uh, replacing facilities, expanding facilities as we have going on now, which uh, Terry and CCAP are going to talk about. Um, the third standard is on availability of services um, that all members of the community, regardless of race, uh, religion, and gender, receive services, and that is certainly something that we uh, uphold and um, spend a lot of time and focus on making sure that we treat all individuals uh, equally and appropriately. Um, this second part of the availability of services is that care uh, is not based on the ability to pay. So regardless of the ability to pay, patients receive the same level of care um, uh, irregardless of their financial situation. Um, and then those individuals that do have some ability to pay, um, we uh, work with our charity plan to, to have them pay an appropriate amount based on Um, the fourth uh, standard is on, uh, on public interest um, and policies uh, that ensure that we're integrated with public, uh, public interest. And then um, the fifth standard is on the uh, gift to the uh, community. And I'll spend a little bit uh, more time talking about the specific limit on that. Um, and then the sixth standard is on um, satellite health care centralized support facilities, which uh, um, is the system or standard that we, uh, that we deal with. But, um, as far as our property taxes um, would have been, uh, we've estimated about $3.7 million. There's a number of things that we have uh, done at Park C that I think the one that first comes to mind is um, providing charity care to those individuals that don't have the ability to pay. Um, we provided care to um, 16,250 uh, different charity cases uh, for 2016 uh, and the charity care uh, about $19.5 million. Dollars. So that alone far exceeds the um, property tax exemption. But there are a lot of other things that we do uh, uh, at Dixie Regional Medical Center to support the, uh, the community. Um, we provide community education, um, community services, and uh, community health improvements. Um, that represented over a quarter million dollars. Um, our hospital governing uh, boards are made up of volunteers, uh, uh, including our board chair, Steve Kaplan. Uh, they invest a lot of time and resources to be able to, to uh, provide support and direction and guidance to the hospital. Um, we've made um, about $80,000 in income contributions to lab services to um, the family health care clinic in the community for uninsured enrollment of people. Uh, we've provided just under a million dollars um, in on-site education to medical, nursing, and other college uh, health profession schools. Um, and uh, another uh, 1,860 hours of uh, continuing medical education hours to non Uh, a little over $200,000 in medical research. Uh, and uh, although this is a cost of doing business, um, the one thing that uh, has become more prevalent is on high deductible health plans. And patients have more responsibility to pay. What we have seen is a little bit of an increase in our bad debts. And what bad debts are in, in comparison or contrast to charity care is where individuals are deemed having the ability to be able to pay, but choose not to. Um, that exceeded uh, $26 million in, in 2016. That's just for one year? That's just for one year. Uh, so that just exceeded our, our charity, charity care. Um, and then uh, $520,000 was do donated to the, um, both the doctors 
Service Volunteer Clinic in our community and also the uh, family health care clinics. Um, and then uh, over $800,000 um, was donated in in-kind contributions to diagnostic lab and uh, imaging vouchers to help support those individuals in our community. They receive a voucher to come into our facilities and, and get uh, uh, imaging lab and diagnostic services as well. The other component uh, also included in the report that you received earlier is uh, on the government payer um, business that we have with Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, as many of you probably are aware, uh, what we receive from Medicare and Medicaid is far below what we receive from commercial um, payers. Uh, and factoring that into um, our overall gift to the community, along with all of the other things that I mentioned, that totals over $210 million for 2016. So uh, we're proud to be part of the, of the uh, community, proud to be able to serve uh, all members in our, our county and um, want to continue to do so. I know uh, Terry and Steve will share a little bit more on, in terms of some of our planning and things that are going forward. But I think I'll stop there and see if there's any questions or anything. Mr. Vance, Mrs. Kane, Mr. Kaplan, I noticed one of the glaring omissions in your report is the phenomenal service that you provide our search and rescue people. And I know that there are times that you get compensated, but there are very, very many times that you do not. And that feeds back to me on uh, when you've carried people, our rescuers up to the top of the mountain or help get people off. It's just that is uh, really filling or filling a need in our community. And, and we appreciate that as well.
as well, make sure we hear the voice of many people. So I invite you as our county commissioners at any time to have access to me at any time. If you hear things or you want us to be exploring something, I hope that you will give us the opportunity to make sure we're listening to you as well. So with that, I'll turn the time over to Steve Kaplan. Thank you, Terry and Steve, hello, commissioners and staff. Grateful to be with you again this year. Last year, we invited you at this meeting to our 40 year anniversary celebration, uh, noting the partnership between Intermountain Healthcare and this community. And uh, we all reflect fondly on the brilliant vision and, and the wisdom of the county commission when they made a, a, a very difficult decision to uh, transfer ownership of our local hospital to a brand new healthcare system, which did not have uh, a, a long track record of success as it currently does. It had been in existence for only about a year. And uh, the agreement, as you all well know, is based on a handshake and a promise. And uh, we are grateful to see the evidence again this year uh, coming, uh, becoming even more visible as we launched the uh, expansion project uh, grew up from the ground. Four new patient, uh, four new towers, uh, doubling of the size of the hospital uh, to over a million square feet of hospital space. And uh, we are uh, representatives of the community uh, as we serve on the board. We are delightful with the uh, decision that was made 40 years ago by your predecessors and we are very grateful as a board for the continued involvement and the commitment that you have as fairly commissioners to the health care and well-being of our local community. I, I believe Steve and Terry have done a terrific job highlighting uh, the valuable partnership that uh, we enjoy with the health care. And I'm uh, particularly pleased to see that, as, as a citizen of this county, that uh, the <coughs> charity care is uh, more than five times uh, what uh, the foregone property tax revenue would be. And I would say, in addition to that, it's not only the amount of charity care, but it's the kind of charity care. As a not-for-profit hospital, uh, we're delighted that the uh, Dixie Regional uh, Medical Center has focused on every uh, element of, of health care needs in the community, including uh, mental health, behavioral medicine needs, which, as you all well know, being in public service, is a growing need across the country, across the world, and uh, uh, to a significant uh, level here in Utah. And it is the uh, not for profit mission of health care that. Well, uh, enables them to focus on things such as uh, the mental health and behavioral health needs of our community. Uh, as a not for profit hospital, as uh, Steve Bant said, uh, the uh, small margin that the hospital operates under is reinvested back into the community, new equipment, new facilities, and also services that a for profit hospital simply would not offer. And so, as a board, we're happy to report to you that we are exceptionally pleased with the community commitment and the performance of the medical center. And we do have a terrific leadership team there, recognized nationally and internationally as being uh, among the best leaders in the healthcare industry. So, those are my thoughts, and I want to congratulate the hospital on what they've done in 2016 with. Uh, Increasing volumes, uh, the volumes just uh, continue to increase in every uh, clinical program, and yet the quality uh, never suffers, it just uh, improves. And uh, we have uh, lower uh, cost and uh, better healthcare outcomes year over year, and the volumes are tremendous. Maybe, uh, we saw this over 50,000 emergency room visits. Wow. Um, uh, <coughs> tens of thousands of inpatient treatments for surgery and for medical related So uh, thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions along with uh, Terry and Steve. 
Well, I just really appreciate having such a, you know, just a great facility, a great institution. I love the story of the county getting out of the business of healthcare and giving it to the professionals because I cannot even think of running a county hospital. But, but you guys do just such a just such a great job, and this uh, this new investment that you're putting into our community is just fantastic. It's a lot of fun watching it go and. Uh, as I was walking in the, today, I was only going up the second floor, and you guys know there by the elevators, you have little trophy cases yeah. on each floor. It looked like I was walking into the Hospital Hall of Fame there, which in reality, I, you know, you guys, you guys deserve it. You are in the Hall of Fame. If there was a Hall of Fame, I'm sure you guys. <laughs> you're, you're correct. There are dozens and dozens of unsolicited recognitions and awards that are given to our hospital. But for our national ranking in, in many different clinical programs and for quality and safety across the board. Did they consider reports to rank your hospital like one of the best in the nation? Yeah, because they're yes. national, nationally recognized for not only outcomes, but the cost, yes. the low cost associated with it. Well, one of the, the benefits that the federal government or even consulting firms have now is that with the electronic medical record, and majority of our bills fund is that the government, right? They have access to a dearth of information. And so they can compare us with 5,200 hospitals in the country. And so uh, consultants are going to look at that and they acknowledge and recognize hospitals for their performance. And each one of them has something different. There may be some that are looking strictly at your financial performance. Some may be looking at just your service experience. So we even have people that look at Unification, the grounds, and how pleasing the facilities are, and their contributions to the community. And we receive these things. And the reason I put them in the trophy cases um, is because um, I know all of our employees want to do a good job, and it's part of the pride of the work they do, right? And so, and hopefully, it builds confidence for all of you that come on our hospital. We're not perfect, we're a people business, we have 3,500 employees. Uh, it's a very sacred responsibility we have. There's medications are given every day. Our these are started. Treatments are done. They're not done by robots. They're done by people. And we have to put safety mechanisms in place. So we're not a perfect organization, but we strive to do. And that gives people encouragement and hopefully gives you confidence. I do have to tell one quick story. So the little old lady I was visiting, you have your remotes that are part of the bed adjustment. Yeah. And uh, right at the top of the remote, there's a red button that's for the nurse, but it looks like the off button for the television. So she actually hit that a couple times on accident, and the nurses, they were, they were uh, Johnny on the spot. They were, they were right there, so. We track response times, right? We have all these electronic tools now for us. So not that they wouldn't respond, but all of our nursing floors and all that, I can see it. <laughs> so um, we're benefited by the technology in some ways. So thank you for your time. We're pleased to be here. And again, let us know if there's anything we should be doing differently than we're doing. Thank you for your um, gift. Yeah, thank you're you. welcome. I would like you to all put on the calendar our celebration for opening up all of our facilities next year, September the 7th. Oh, and we hope our attorney commission will be there with us as we celebrate the opening of our facilities. Look forward to it. Thank you very well, much. Well, thanks for what I mean. I know you guys do a lot at the hospital, but you three yeah. individually do a lot. I mean, you're here late in the evening working hard, and so just for you three, I want to express my appreciation. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Very good. Item 16 is a consideration of resolution R-2017-2012, a resolution authorizing a land exchange between Washington County and Darien Coffin. I would speak to this. This is a resolution authorizing the county to exchange a parcel of land that we've got for another parcel of land uh, with another individual. The values are equal, but really I think for Washington County, this is a win. This property is, is right river bottom uh, on the Virgin River south of Bloomington. And its value for Washington County is this potential mitigation. This is uh, uh, flycatcher, uh, 
habitat and oftentimes the county is in need of coming up with some mitigation and so we're essentially coming up with twice as many acres and uh, fixing things for property owners down there so it makes more sense for them as well and so uh, that's what we're doing I would uh, make a motion in support of resolution R-2017-2212 a resolution authorizing a land exchange between Washington County and Darren Coughlin. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. I believe that item 17 is going to be tabled. I'm not sure. Correct. The, uh, uh, the sheriff he left, but he still wanted to work on the terms of this disagreement. Very good. Do I have a motion to table item 17? No, so, so I'll second. You're moving. We have a motion and a second to table item 17. All those in favor say aye. 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 Item 18, uh, consideration of resolution R-2017-2214, a resolution um, of Washington County adopting fire restriction proposal by the state forester. I see our, our fire warden here. Uh, Adam Heider, do you want to speak to this briefly? Yeah. I don't know if anybody noticed. It's summertime. It's hot. <laughs> low humidity. Uh, high temperatures. Uh, so just what exactly is making you think that we're coming in fire season? Well, you know, for as much moisture as we've had, we've actually had a lot of fires at fairly high elevations, uh, not only in our county, but up in Iron County, of course, everybody's yeah. in the Brian Lake fire, and that's 8,500 to 9,000 feet, and some areas even higher. So wow. uh, with the amount of moisture we have, there's a lot of fine fuels, which is what's primarily carrying a lot of these fires. But out of probably 25 fires this year that we've had, that we report from the county standpoint, um, outside of the city jurisdictions, only one of them has been likely to cost. They've all been human cost fires. The uh, majority of them are equipment failures with vehicles, tires, brakes, those sort of things. And we have uh, had a few that were people burning, uh, one individual grinding. So all these things that are set forth in the fire restrictions um, they're occurring and they're occurring early. Yeah. So, yeah, there's definitely a need, and especially for the last few days. Um, everything that we've had has been human cost. Yeah, everything is, uh, this seems like a standard procedure that we do almost every year about this time. Um, yeah. Just to kind of highlight uh, some of the restrictions. This does apply to the unincorporated areas of Washington County, correct? Uh, correct. Different municipalities have their own. Yeah. fire uh, restrictions as we come into this season. Primarily uh, tracer ammunition, um, exploding targets, fireworks, um, campfires in, in, in approved camp areas, and uh, other one is uh, don't smoke in a, in a dry field, right? Right, and you have to be in a building or a vehicle, or most buildings you can't smoke them anyway, so it really restricts that. Yeah, any kind of open burning, whether it's a campfire or burning piles, whatever, uh, restricts everything down to only being able to use stoves with gas. And it does talk about grinding and welding. Right. And some of you might remember the fire that started in Harriman and burned over into, uh, what was it, uh, Fort? Camp Williams. Camp Williams burned Camp Williams halfway down. Uh, it started because somebody had grinding. Yeah, there, there's been a few up that way. I mean, we've had some really bad years here, uh, even with restrictions. Like 2011, we had a rash of cutting road and grain, and those things specifically. Um, I think part of it has to do with what's, what's going on in the economy. Um, I know in 2011, a lot of those were due to people scrapping metal and doing some of those activities out in rural areas and just not taking the proper precautions um, before doing that. Because they are in the restrictions, and there are certain things in those restrictions that still need to be done in certain circumstances, I can't issue waivers to those individuals to do certain things. Like we ran into issues with big UDOT projects in the county and things of that. You nature. say you can. Yeah, I can. As long as they yeah. are properly set up to. And I can spell out exactly what they have to do um, to meet the requirements to be able to do those restricted things. You know, like have the fire department. So hopefully the monsoons will come soon. So this park rest here. It says on here that if you have an ATV or chainsaw, 
It's a stainless steel screen that's mounted inside of the muffler so that any exhaust gases have to go through that screen and, and that screen catches sparks and allows them to burn out before they can be ejected into the dry grass. So there's a lot of finer particles that come out so they cool off a lot faster. And it's been a requirement for like ATPs probably since the mid-90s. I think now we started putting them on chainsaws about that same period of time as well. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve resolution number R-2017-2214, the resolution of Washington County adopting the fire restriction proposed by the state forester. I'll second. We have a motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 It's kind of sad you have to spell this out, but you should. Okay. Be smart. Yeah. What are we doing for press releases and getting this, this word out? Mm -hmm. Or anything we can do to partner with you? Um, I think Pete does a really good job of helping us push that stuff out to our residents and the county. So Thank you. I appreciate your guys' support. And so you guys know I had great support from the sheriff's office this year. Um, there hasn't been any issues. They've been on top of everything. Um, the road department brought in his folks and he and his folks. So they've been a big support to them already this year. So it's much appreciated. It makes my job a lot easier when those guys are supportive. Very good. Thank, Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Um, let's see, item 19, consideration of resolution 2017-2215, the resolution adopting final tax rate and budgets. Yeah. This is a relatively routine matter because every year we have, a, we have to approve uh, sort of like tax rates. Uh, as you know, we prepare our budgets at the end of the year for the coming year, so we don't know what the tax rate or revenue is actually going to be when we prepare those. And in the interest of conservative budgeting, we put the 2016 amount in there for 17 until we get this uh, calculation completed at this time of the year. And when we open the budget, we'll put this new number in our budget. So typically, this is a bit of a gain for us because we'll have a bit of new growth from what it was the previous year. You have the, the numbers there. The only one I really want to talk about probably is the interest in seeking fund part of our budget. That's the GEO bond uh, debt service. Uh, that's the only that's the only amount of the tax money that is kind of variable. We can tax for whatever we need to tax for to pay the debt service on GEO bonds, which have been approved by the taxpayers. And to give you an idea, last year in our tax rate, we need $2,073,739 to cover our debt service for GL bonds. This year we need $1,254,900 to cover that, which is a reduction of more than $800,000. Uh, so we're paying off a GL bond this year in 2017 with fund balance. And so that's, gonna, that's directly going to affect lower uh, our citizens' tax rate to cover those. So Washington County yeah, portion of that tax rate. Yeah, that's the that's the, the what we do for the for covered Washington County GO bonds. And it, yeah, well, all we got here is just the Washington County rates. Lower taxes. You should put a better in, in your cap. Oh, that's good. Well, I'll keep more dollars in my pocket. Yeah, what's going to happen? So it's not quite the rate's not quite cut in half, but it's close. So, so right. thank you, Kim. Thanks, Kim. Appreciate you. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion in support of resolution R-2017-2215, a resolution adopting final tax rates and budgets. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes. Uh, item 20, Commissioner's Report. Commissioner Cox, you uh, attended a very successful. I did, actually. Uh, as many are aware Washington County has been involved in litigation since uh, about 2013 on the uh, HCP and the Red Cliffs Conservation Area. A lawsuit was brought by uh, Mr. Jim Doyle and in visiting with uh, Mr. Doyle's attorney uh, <clears throat> this lawsuit dealt with unjust enrichment and uh, there was really never any animus 
against Washington County, but I think just a, a, a frustration that an inholder has not yet been compensated, and there, there's more than one. But uh, yesterday in Cedar City, uh, Judge Barnes dismissed the last two outstanding issues against the county, and, and that lawsuit is fully resolved, uh, absolving the county of any particular uh, liability in that lawsuit. So it's good news for our taxpayers. Yeah. Yet uh, I continue to uh, hope that we can work to find a resolution for the inholdings and uh, have a situation that's equitable for all. Yeah. So, Mr. Chairman, just a point of order. At our last commission meeting, we had tabled an, uh, an item specifically re in regards to uh, indigent defense for our juvenile contracts, and it was supposed to be on this agenda. I, I, I read through the agenda, and I just skipped my mind, and then at the end, I realized that wasn't on here. And so we may have to hold a special commission meeting to adjust that, because our next commission I'll meeting isn't until the end of July because of the 4th of July. And, and the judge has placed certain limitations on when this issue has to be resolved either way. And so I just wanted to notify that we may have to have a special commission meeting to resolve that one issue. Okay. I'm pretty sure we can take care of it in less than an hour, though. Well, we have to notice it. We have to. <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyways. Yeah, I, now that you bring that well, up, I, I remember. And I, remember I apologize. That. It's kind of been something I've been following, and I should have brought it up. So. Well, I do think this is good news. It started in federal court, was brought into state court, and now it's been dismissed uh, for the time being. So now it's huge. So it's very good. Well, with that, uh, just one last happy note since we're celebrating, and uh, Dennis Green has taught us to celebrate things in the county. Um, we did finish our intergenerational poverty uh, plan uh, the Lieutenant Governor asked us to work on. It's been quite a process as we've had well over 30 people at times from a variety, from the school district, the health department, uh, mental health, working on how Washington County can, can better address this issue. And I think we've come up with some, some, some really good goals and uh, kind of a, a plan and a, a foundation to that plan that uh, will continue to go forward and uh, working to lift citizens of Washington County out of poverty. Well, well thank you for your effort yeah. and Nicole's efforts yeah. uh, in building and working on that plan. Yeah, and we talked about others. this earlier. Nicole will never say yes to being co-chair to anything else. <laughs> no, she's done a great job in, in putting that together. Very good. We'll stand adjourned. Thanks.